Hey guys, Quinn from Canada. This is the follow-up video to my Revo mid-print nozzle swap video where I showed you this Banshee that was printed using four nozzles and three mid-print nozzle swaps. Let's go to the computer. I'll show you how I created the G-code so you could have one of these on your own. All right, let's start by loading our model. And the next thing you want to do is switch over to your eight millimeter nozzle profile and make sure you're on 0.4 millimeter layer height. Go into your print settings, make sure your first layer is set to be the same as your layer height. So 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And what I also like to do is go into my infill settings and make sure I have the same infill pattern and fill density. That makes it look a lot nicer when you're slicing it. Then click slice now. And over here you want to select a multiple of six. So I'm going to select 12 right here. You can see right there, 12. Click your plus right here. Now go all the way up to 24 right there. Click our plus, go to 36 and finally click plus. So now when you scrub through here, you will see you have one, two, three, four layers. Slice it again, export, and give it a name you'll remember. I'll just use layer one. Next thing, go over to your 0.6, make sure you're on your 0.3. And again, print settings, make sure your infill percentage and your infill is the same. And more importantly, make sure you're at 0.3 nozzle height and 0.3 first layer. Slice it up, export the G-code, layer two. Now you wanna repeat this for 0.4 nozzle size, 0.2 layer height. Again, make sure your layer height is at 0.2 and your first layer is also at 0.2. Go back here, slice now, export layer three. And finally go to our 0.25 nozzle size. Make sure you're at 0.1 for your layer height. Make sure your layer height's at 0.1, first layer at 0.1 and infills the same, we're good to go. Slice and export. After this, open up layer one and hit control F for find, look up M600, find now. Now, grab everything after that line, either hold shift and go page down or just scroll to the very end and delete everything and save it. Now open layer two search for M600, go there. And now this time we want to delete everything above M600. So select it up, keep holding shift, scroll up, click. There we go. Now search for the next M600. There we go. And delete everything after that. Third, you want to go to the first, second M600 and delete everything above it. And look for the next one and delete everything under it. Last one's pretty simple and we're looking for our third M600. There you go. Now select everything to the top, delete and save. Now I like to copy layer one here, copy here and I'll call it test print. Go in here, everything's already here from the first one. So I'll just go to the very bottom. I'll open up the second one, control A, control C, close it up and control V and I have it pasted. See how it says 24 here? That's the layer number. So when I open up my next one here, layer three, I should see very close to the top, G1Z24, that tells it to go to layer 24. So again, click Control A, Control C, go back to our test print, paste it down, and I'll take everything in layer four, Control A, Control C, Control V. And now we're at the bottom of our test script.
So I'm just going to scroll to the top. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to open up my test layer swap G code right here. And I'm going to select it all, copy it. And I'm going to look for M600. And I should see two M600 back to back. So wherever I see that, I'm just going to uncomment one. So make it a remark so it's not actuated by a G code. I'm going to delete the other. And then I'm going to post my G code right here. And I'm going to continue to do that. And when we get to this one, color change G code equals M600. That means we're done. So now just save this file here, file, save, and go into our Prusa slicer and go G code preview. Once you got this open, you can see all the steps that the G code file follows and you can just actually scrub through here so you can go one step at a time and see how this all prints now here's how you check to make sure that there's no malicious movements click options go to travel and you can tell everywhere the no nozzle has traveled so if you ever see the nozzle come across and go straight down into the print that might be problems but I don't see any of that here. If you go to our layer change, like this one right here, I can then scrub through this code. See, I can move it through and I can see what it's doing. Now, lastly, I wanna show you a little problem that you can discover looking through these G codes. If you look at it here, at this layer, we're not printing the outside of this uh, flagpole, I guess. And that's probably because the slicer is rounding it off because the nozzle is too thick for that layer width. But when we get to the next one, you can see that it's there. So in this case, you could actually go here. You can move your G code bit by bit until you discovered where that's being printed. So it starts being printed right there. And you can tell that that movement right there, it's highlighted right here. So it starts on line 1600133. If you're using something like Programmer Notepad, which arranges your file and gives you a number, you can actually hop right to that layer. And anywhere there's a movement for a print that you don't like, you could remove it. So the G code file that I'm uploading to Prusa Printer will already have these lines removed just to prevent this from printing in midair. However, I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial just for the sake of saving time. It is a long process. So the last thing I'd like to cover is how my G code works for my nozzle swap. So everything that you see that has a semicolon at the beginning like this, that's a remark. That's basically a line that's not gonna be read. It's just a comment to let you know what's going on. So first of all, what I want to do is I want to play a tone. That's what the M300 command does. That's just there to wake me up to say, hey, I'm starting the procedure. Following that, I move to a height of 100. So if your print is taller than 100, you'll have to change this number. After that, I issue a G1 command to move to 200, which is almost all the way to the right. If your print is larger than that, you'll have to change this one as well. The next step, play another tone just to let me know that I'm about to execute another command. I wait for 15 seconds. Then I do a slightly higher pitch tone, which is always a 10 second warning. I wait 10 seconds and I unload the filament. You can reduce the time in these if you really want to. There, the numbers here are in seconds. So S15 is 15 seconds. Following that, I issue an M702 command, which is filament unload. After the filament's unloaded, I turn the fan to 100% to help my nozzle cooling. And I issued a command to cool my nozzle to 50 degrees Celsius. The difference between having a fan and no fan is somewhere around a minute in cooldown. So it is significant. Then I wait for the extruder to cool down to 50 degrees. If you want to go to a different temperature, make sure you change both of these because this is saying go down to 50, and this is saying wait till I'm at 50 and below. So if these numbers don't match, you could be waiting here forever. Next, I play another tone to let me know that cooldown is finished. 
And at this point, this is where you want to re start removing your nozzle. Again, we have a 55 second timer, which is good enough for me, but you might want to up that up to 60 or 70 seconds. I play another 10 second warning tone, wait 10 seconds, and then give you the mode change tone right as my nozzle starts to heat up. And here I have it set up to heat up to 215. If you're using a different material, you'll have to change this to match. And of course, you'll have to change this one as well because it's waiting for this nozzle to hit this temperature before it moves to the next step. If this is too low, it will start moving and start printing at a reduced temperature, which might clog your nozzle. If this is set way too high, it will never hit that temperature and you'll be waiting forever. Finally, we play the start tone. We wait 20 seconds. Then we play the mode switch tone, wait 10 seconds. And at this point, we start loading the filament. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope someone out there will be able to use this knowledge to create something really cool. And when you do, don't forget about me. Anyways, guys, like always, have a great night. And uh, I'm a little under the weather, so no Scott scribing today. But I do hope you subscribe. Na zdrowie.